Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah K. Ramsey here to help you find love and success after a toxic relationship so you can bounce back better. And I'm here with Kate London. Hey, Kate. Hello, good morning, and good evening over where you are. Yes, <laughs> you can obviously tell um, we are not neighbors. <laughs> we <laughs> no, I made a joke that we had similar accents, right? Um, but I wore, she, I, when I met Kate, she was still living in Bali. So I wore my most tropical clothes to meet her. And now you're in Australia where it's winter, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Oh, so. It's a completely different change. I like I, all my clothes are like to suit Bali weather, and now I have no like no winter clothes. I like have a few shirts, and it's got to go shopping. I know, but we both have our clothes. So even though we're like on different parts, yeah, of we're matching. <laughs> yes, yes, I really did. I I wore my tropical shirt for you. Um, well, we are here to talk. Well, let me tell you a little about but. Kate does. Um, she helps the other woman get out of toxic relationships, right? So if there's a married man and he seduces and manipulates and tricks someone into uh, coming into his circle, Kate helps people sort that out. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. I do. You want to add anything to that? Yeah, yeah, essentially, so the other women, mistresses in affairs and long-term affairs get out of um, these relationships when they feel so torn between, like, staying and, and or going and not know how to actually go and actually stay gone. Um, so I help women make that massive leap and end something that is unhealthy for them. So Kate and I both come up to the word stuck over mm -hmm. and over and over again in our work, right? So it's just, I feel stuck, I feel stuck, I feel stuck, I feel stuck. And the longer you stay stuck, the easier it is to stay stuck, right? So we are, yeah. So yeah, so we're going to dive into how to create the life you want, the three reasons you are stuck, and then some life-saving strategies for moving forward, okay? So lots of really good stuff today, and you guys are going to be excited. Um, Kate, tell us a bit about the idea of becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable, or as I like to say, it's fine, and other lies. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, th this this stuck component is so common and women being like, can this solve, can this change and everything like that. And when do I stay? When do I go? And like, it's a common uh, conversation that comes up a lot with both of us. And what happens is we get used to staying in the discomfort and it becomes our new comfort zone. So we've got our comfort zone. And when we stay in a uncomfortable situation that may be toxic for so long, we then take it as our norm and we take it as okay. So what we have to look at is in order to get out of um, the uncomfortable of what we're living in, we have to step outside of our comfort zone, if that makes sense. And although it's trippy, we are still living in our comfort zone. We have still become accustomed to living in this kind of lifestyle. And so we have to get, we have to get used to um, getting outside of our comfort in order to create change, if that makes sense. So we have become used to being uncomfortable in our comfort zone. Well, I think of the analogy of the frog and if you stuck a frog in like a boiling pot of water, they would hop out. But Absolutely. if you put a frog in room temperature water and then you make it hotter and make it hotter and make it hotter and make it hotter, you have a dead frog, right? And in our own lives, it's become hotter and hotter and hotter, but the water was normal for us. It was our normal. And so you don't, you don't notice, right? Yeah, um, yes. And, you know, Kate and I talked about that's true when you're in a relationship. It can also be true after you leave because you think, oh, I'm going to leave and get out. And if you have a, you know, a sucky, lame life, whatever the situation is, and then you take him out of it, but then you have the same life and it's still uncomfortable. It's still sucky. It's still lonely. It's still without passion. It's still without whatever it is. 
And, you know, it's about rebuilding a new life, not just getting him out of your life. Absolutely. Because um, you have been conditioned to um, operate in this way. And although when we think we leave him, everything changes, sometimes it doesn't. And we still running the old patterns of before of how we were conditioned for so many years um, with so much emotion. So when we get out, it's still about learning to step out of this comfort zone of our old conditioning in order to create a new identity. And I have, I remember on a little notepad, I wrote the words, it's fine. And then I crossed it out. And that became my signal to me. When I said something was fine, I was making excuses, right? Uh, yeah. uh, it's fine. No, yes. It's <laughs> you know, and I don't want to get to the end of my life and say, it was fine, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's just um, triggered in me. I realized that my one was, I don't know. And when I was getting coached, when I personally was going through my situation, um, I went back a few times and my coach was like, every time you go back, our coaching sessions are just full of, I don't knows. You've said, I don't know about 20 times in this so session so far. And it's you taking away the responsibility to choose for yourself. So oh. it's, I, I don't know. So that's similar, similar things, just different oh, I, ways. I love that. And I love your line of you taking responsibility for choosing for yourself. I mean, yeah. and it's interesting. I have a, one of the exercises my clients do is like the, it's not my fault exercise. And I get a lot of pushback on that. They're like, but, but it was my fault. I chose to stay and I chose to this. And I say, yes. And there was an entire piece of data that you did not have, which is you were being manipulated. You manipulated, you're being conditioned, you're being tricked. So do I hold you responsible for your future? Yes. Do I hold you responsible for all the things they probably flipped on you to make your fault? No way, <laughs> right? Because they probably made everything your fault, right? You know, they're, they're so good at the flip. They're so yeah. Yes, absolutely. Responsible for the future, move on from the past. Yeah. So number two, you are giving into fear. Tell us about giving into fear. Yes, absolutely. So we have our, our fear, which is our ego, and then we have intuition, which is faith. And when we are operating in back to, and this has become our conditioning, we have, con we have conditioned ourselves to run off fear, which is fight, flight, or freeze. Um, we have conditioned ourselves to run off that all the time. And I want to give you an example. If you were feeding a, two dogs over the fence, a massive hunk of meat, and each day you just threw over this piece of meat, one dog is going to become dominant. And it is going to get fatter, bigger, angrier, more in control. And it's going to like eat the meat <laughs> and the other one is going to become less in control it's going to stay away it's not even going to go for the meat when you start walking up to the fence it's going to get skinnier and that's the same with these two voices in our head one is our intuition and one is fear and whatever one you exercise whichever one you feed is going to become more powerful so it's about understanding which one am I operating from right now? Which one is in the driver's seat of my life right now? Am I operating from it, my intuition and faith and trusting in my heart or am I operating from fear? What is going to happen if? And um, scarcity and our survival mechanism, which one am I operating from and how can I move from operating to fear and moving into faith? I love that. And I was fortunate enough to study with some of Tony Robbins platinum mindset coaches and a girl named Jane was, she's, you know, coach all these billionaires and whatnot. And she said, you have two options. You can believe in a higher power and, and, or believe in yourself. You know, they don't have to be mutually exclusive, but when you think about moving forward in faith, you know, it's either there's a higher power that's going to take care of me, or I have the skills that I can learn how to take care of myself. And yeah, both, right. You know, I don't, I don't want those to feel like they have to be mutually exclusive, but she said, that's all there is. Yes. That's all there is. It's a higher power, believing in faith, the faith in the higher power or the faith in yourself. In yourself yeah. 
right? And yes, absolutely. You know, uh, I loved that. It was so, it was so, made so much sense. And it, yes. and I think about the times I did not trust my intuition and was right. Yes. And it may have been 100% of the time, right? Now, I was really good at talking myself out of my intuition. But it's not that I didn't pick up on it. No, it was always there. It's yes. always great. Yes, it's talking yourself out of it. But I th that's an easier problem to solve. If you notice, yeah. and it's like, oh, I noticed that. I think that person might be sketchy or cheating or toxic or trying to power over me or trying to control me. It's about doing something about it. Yes. And that's, that's really an easier problem to solve than not picking up on anything, right? That would be a much tougher, a tougher problem to solve. Um, so you said something about three tips on how to move from fear thinking to faith thinking? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things I've got is questions. When we are asking ourselves questions, we can either direct our our focus to um, fear or we can direct it to faith. So one of the ones that we could direct it to fo uh, fear would be, why is this always happening to me? Why is he always controlling me? Or why, sorry, if you're in, out of the situation, why haven't I been able to create ch change? When you're doing that, you're asking yourself to pull on references of why you haven't been. And so you're bringing that whole focus to the surface and in turn, you're going to keep finding more of it. What we want to do is we want to ask ourselves empowering questions that create a new focus. So who, the main question that I love asking and I get my clients to ask is who do I get? Who do I get to be? You get to design your life every moment. You get to show up and you get to choose who you want to be. It's, it's a constant choice. And who do I get to be today to have the life that I say I want to have? And so questions are so powerful. And whatever questions are serving you to direct your focus, ask yourself them every day and answer them. Um, because when, when we're asking ourselves questions that uh, put us into a hole, then, then we're going to keep going into that place. So open up questions that are going to direct your focus in an empowering way. That is one. Um, the other one is I would really look at your physiology, the way you're moving your body. If we're in a fear state, we are frozen or we are angry, we're closed, we're tense. Um, if we're in a faith state, we're up, we're bouncy, we're, we're feeling proud, we're feeling tall, we're breathing. So what we want to do is if you're feeling stuck, and if you're feeling stagnant, it's probably because your body is also stagnant. So one of the things that I do is get out and get yourself out of your environment, get yourself out into nature, go for a walk and move your body. That's really helpful. And the third one is focus. So you, we've got focus through questions, but we've also got focus through references. Focus yourself on the references of your past where it was possible and start building up those references instead of building up the references of where it's not possible. And there are three things. Focus, body, yeah. and questions. Yeah. Um, and in my own development of Sarah, um, I remember th thinking, okay, if I was the version of myself that I want to be, what decision would I make? Right? Whether it yeah. be something as small as the treat of getting my nails done or something large, like buying more coaches for myself, right? Yeah, I always want to improve, you know? And it's like, okay, if this, does Oprah really question herself whether or not she should invest in self-improvement, right? She does not battle that in her mind. There's a problem that needs to be solved and she finds the people to solve it, right? Yeah. Um, that's who I want to be, right? It's no longer a relationship. Really, that's so good. I love that. Oh, yeah, it, but it's, um, I just hired a speech coach to help with my, maybe I'll um, have her give me your accent. I, I think that would be <laughs> I think that would help, that would make all the difference. That's where, that's where things are not going right, is you just need Australian accent. I think so, too. I had a recent call with a, a, a girl from Melbourne, and I felt like I was talking to Sandra D the entire time on the call, and it was just, like, so lovely, and I was just like, Oh, you know, she was talking about these, of course, when people talk to me, it's these 
kind of horrible things that have happened to them. But she said it so lovely and eloquently. And I was like, this, is, this sounds so much better than <laughs> when I say it. <laughs> but, but it really is. I really have hired a speech coach. Um, I tend to go very quickly. I want my words to land powerfully. Um, when you, the first step is healing. And then I think it's almost scary because we think, well, if we love self-growth and we are healed, what comes next? Yes. And it's called self-growth, not self-healing, right? Yes. Because if you're healing, you're always healing from them. Yes. If you're growing, you're just growing. Expanding right? all the time. Attached to someone else. So we can always be growing. We always should be growing. Um, yes, absolutely. Healing, right? You want to get healed. No, actually get healed, right? Don't, don't skip over it. But actually yeah. get healed. Put, and put a period at the end of that sentence. That you yeah. Um, so what excuses do you hear for people staying stuck? Mm, excuses. Um, a lot of the excuses, some of the excuses are, it, it depends what area of phase they're in their life. If they're out of the relationship or in the, in the relationship, there's heaps that I work with, like, like we we work in a little bit different like in it or out of it um but a lot of the ones are yep yeah, but he's still an amazing person and, and really backing up the amazing qualities which is beautiful um but it's also about acknowledging what's best for you the other is also um not being able to create change until uh, that's the biggest one that i always um come up across is yeah, but I can't change until my kids are 18 or I can't change until this changes or I can't change because this has happened. And what, what we want to shift our focus to is aside from that, how could we change and what do we want to create our life as and not focus on the problem, but instead focus on the solution. Yeah, absolutely. And is it a problem that can be solved? You know, in, in the situation you're talking about, I would imagine your clients are always wanting to solve the problem of him. Oh, if yeah. I just love hard enough, he'll choose me. You know, if I am so amazing that he'll choose me. And even with my clients, if there's a toxic parent, right? If, if I perform well enough, they will choose me. It's the same game, yeah. right? Different players, same game. And the game is you work and work and work and work and work and hope to earn it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, your stories have meaning and whatever uh, meaning is behind what you're looking at, you will create a life from that. So we want to look at what stories am I crafting in my life and are they going to serve me in the direction that I want to go in or is it pulling me back? Is it making me smaller? So you really want to question like a belief, a belief is something that we no longer question. So what happens is when we believe something to be true, we don't question it. We just think, yes, the sky is blue, so don't try to convince me it's purple. And, and, but we do, we want to question these stories and ask, is that something that I actually want to believe in my life? Is it true that I can't solve this until my child is 18 or whatever it is? Or how, is that a story that I want to believe? Or could I be proactive and see if I could solve the story, how could I solve it now instead of when my child is 18? There's a coach, I cannot remember who it is, but they say something along of the lines of, if, you know, when it's time to make a decision or something, well, if you had to make a decision, what decision would you make? Or if you had to solve the problem, what would you do? You know, and that it's really aligned with what you're saying. I can't remember who it was, but that idea of like, well, okay, but if you had to, could you do it? You know, and it's like, oh. Let's open the door just a little bit. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and toxic relationships teach us learned helplessness. Whether it be a parent, partner, who, you know, coworker even. It's, oh, you'll never make it without me. The only reason you're worth anything is because of your attachment to me. Right? Yeah. Um, that is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie, right? And it's a game they all play teaching that learned helplessness. And then you feel like it's damaged, you're damaged goods. Yes. If you were damaged goods, they wouldn't be trying to hold on to you so tightly. Yes, absolutely. 
and and if if you truly believe that these beliefs are true which is what happens in the first step of change is is they are true for us and, and i don't want you to completely push it away and be like it can't be true if you're holding on to it it, it is some sort of security in it but what i invite you to do is to just explore i don't have to let go of this belief today but if back to the exploring if you could solve it today what would that look like and just explore the op options and what will happen is it will just open your perspective up and no longer will that belief have as much significance and weight and you'll start to find other reasons where you could create change sooner you feed a different dog yes Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you feed a different dog. So let's talk about some ways to get unstuck. Um, what what is a way to to get us unstuck? Mm. One of the first things that needs to happen in order of us in order for us to get unstuck is we need to actually acknowledge that we're choosing to stay stuck, and it, it's so scary because when we choose to change, then we don't have anything to hold on it to anymore. The, the, the truth is back to our first point is we've become comfortable with the uncomfortable. You're, you're finding comfort in the pain right now. And so acknowledging that this has to change is actually quite a scary decision. But the first thing that needs to happen in order for you to get unstuck is for you to acknowledge that this has got to stop and you are choosing to move forward it from this past identity and create a new identity. That, that is massive. If you're not choosing to 100% commit, then you're going to keep one foot on first base while trying to get to second base, if that makes sense. The phrase I use in my group is get past the past, get real about the present, so you can get serious about your future, right? If you're keeping that one foot on first base, you're never gonna make it to third. No. Right, right you just can't. Um, and I also want to point out for, for step number two, that action is the antidote of anxiety. Yes. Action is the antidote of anxiety. The anxiety you feel is a signal. There is a problem you need to solve, right? And I see so many fabulous women try to meditate it or medicate it away but they never get to a solution. So there's relief in, uh, you know, med meditation retreat. Oh, I'm going to go away and like find myself in a meditation retreat. Great. That is not going to solve your problem, right? I'm not against that, but it is not going to solve your problem. A pill is not going to solve your problem. If you have a toxic person problem, you have to be the solution. Yes, absolutely. Period. Yeah. Absolutely. And the only way to fix it is to get off first base right is to take it's scary action and to acknowledge what is the elephant in the room that needs to be acknowledged um not taking the the, the easy steps of med meditating or medicating but actually a good example was when i was so i was in a a long term long term affair for ages as, as the mistress as the other woman and I was so in pain every single day, yet to create the change instead of, you know, stopping the relationship, which would be a very smart idea. Um, I was saying my affirmations every day and feeling like, yeah, but I still, if I, if I say my affirmations stronger with more energy and I start stepping into the woman I want to become, then, then things will change. It's like, no, the thing that you're avoiding is that you actually have got to stop this relationship that you're in, not say a thousand affirmations and hope that by saying it with more powerful and more, more stronger intent with more emotion that maybe it will integrate. It's like, hold on a second. We've got to clean up something that the elephant in the room that you're not actually looking to clean up. And, and it's so scary and it, and it's confronting, but action is the antidote, not, not, the little things but the actual proper action that needs to happen well and i think if the elephant is in the room you can ignore it but it still poops yeah right it, you're still stepping in the mess constantly yeah. from the shoe and it's attached to you and wherever you go and you're like oh no yeah. 
great. I am powerful. And it's okay. And you have SHIT on your shoe. Like, yeah. you know, it's just, it's what it is. It's, just, it's what it is. There's an elephant in the room, right? Um, and I love meditation. I love yoga. I do, I do all these things, you know. What? Yeah, it's so powerful. Bad, right? They're just, if you have a toxic person problem, you have to address the toxic person problem to create any real solution. Otherwise, yes. it's always going to be a mess. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and just in that situation, so it, it's often not easy to see what you're in when you're in it every day. Um, and so I would invite you to explore, like when I was doing these affirmations and really trying to like control my emotions because I was in pain so much. I was like, oh, I just like, if I do affirmations, then I'll be happier. I legitimately thought that that was the cure that I needed to do more affirmations and really own my identity as a, an empowering positive person. And I didn't see that that was the challenge. That was actually the problem was that I, I knew that was causing me pain, but I was trying to solve it in a different way. And so it's sometimes hard to see and it's totally normal to think that meditation is going to be the answer because it does help so much. Um, but I invite you to look at, ooh, what am I not seeing here? That's another powerful question. What am I not seeing? What am I not doing that could be powerful to creating change? Well, and you, as you say, what am I not seeing? I ask myself, you know, what am I not solving? Right? You know, yes, you know right. You solve it, right? You know, yes. you just you say, there's poop in the floor, right? Like, clean it up, <laughs> get the elephant out, you know, I mean, just that analogy, and I wanted our final tip and trick, um, number three, and this is from a book called 13 Things Mentally Strong Women Don't Do by Amy Marin, um, and she just flat out addresses the fact that just because the decision is right doesn't mean it isn't scary, because I'm sure as you left that relationship, it felt very scary, and I'd say, because of that fear, like you learned this stuff in the school of hard knocks, right? You know, the fear and faith, you learned it from the school of hard knocks. And so you knew what the right decision was, but it still felt scary. And, and I think sometimes we talk ourselves into thinking, oh, if I reach out for help, if it feels scary, it's not the right decision. You know, if I make a change in my career, if it feels scary, it's not the right decision. If I decide to have a baby or not have a baby or, you know, start dating again or not starting again, whatever it is, going to be scary yes absolutely and that doesn't mean it's wrong right it just makes it more of a must it, it gets bigger the more we put it off and, yeah. and it absolutely it can be massively scary and painful and confronting and that doesn't mean it's wrong it's just like exercise if you have a really hard session and you're in so much pain there's a difference between good pain that your, your muscles are growing and you're growing as a person or like injured pain. And so th the same is with what you're going through. There's a difference between pain that's going to serve you in the long run and, and your intuition will know what's right. It's pulling you towards the pain, but you're not wanting to step into it because you're feeling scared about it. And Kate, I don't know about you, but one of the promises I've made myself in my life is the scariest thing is probably the right thing yes. because they talk about, you know, I'm, I'm talking about Oprah earlier, but they may, you know, they talk about the 1%, like the 1% wealthy and whatnot. You know, they, most of those people took chances that other people would not take. Right. And not that it has to be just about wealth, but as you move forward in life and dating and achievement and success and healthy relationships, whatever, like, you know, there's a reason the top, people make different decisions than people who aren't at the top, whether the, whatever the top is for you, top healthy relationships, top wealth, top in their career, you know, whatever that is, whatever success means. And really thinking, okay, if I was this person, you know, what kind of decision would I make? Um, and, uh, you know, it just really changes that fear and thinking the scary decision probably is the right decision. Yeah. And you are capable. And if you step into that identity of like thinking, what would this influencer that you love do in this moment, then you can choose through, choose, choose through that instead of choosing through that, that fear dog, that the one that's controlling um, out of wanting to stay safe.
but not thrive. And our, you know, our brains are designed to keep us safe. Yeah. Make us happy, right? And it's interesting that we talk about the comfort zone, but the very first point you made, the comfort zone isn't really comfortable. It really sucks. Like <laughs> your comfort zone is pretty miserable, you know, and just, just acknowledging there's poop all around, which <laughs> I did not discuss that before this call. <laughs> <laughs> we did not discuss that that would be our topic of discussion. <laughs> but the, the truth is, what that's what also keeps people on the fence for so long in the, these situations is because you're on, you, you, you feel like if I go this way, it's going to be painful. If I stay, it's going to be painful. Or if I take action, it's going to be painful. So you just freeze and you block it out and you're like, oh, let's face it tomorrow. But the truth is, yes, there may be pain either way. And the quicker you choose to act in the discomfort of challenge in order for you to grow, the quicker you'll be out of that pain. And, and recognizing that there's always a set of problems, right? Whatever choice you make um, during COVID, I was really, really busy and had to hire another assistant. That's a wonderful problem to have, right? That's a fabulous <laughs> problem to have, right? There's other problems I've had that are not fabulous. But there's always going to be problems in life that if you keep running, like in your situation where it was eight years, you keep running into the same problem over and over and over and over, right? You never move forward. And, and so when you think, if I stay, if I go, if I get help, if I don't get help, if I move forward, if I don't move forward, recognizing there's always going to be problems. You just want to choose a better set of problems. Yes. And truly empowering meaning behind the problem. Instead of it being a problem, like it, it's an opportunity for growth. And when we choose a story that inspires us, then the problem doesn't seem so big anymore. I love it. Thank you so much, Kate. Anything you want to, anything else you want to throw out there? I, I honestly, for the women that are going through this, the, the change is on like so close. And then although it feels really hard right now, um, you've come so far, even when you feel right in the thick of it. And so um, we <laughs> together are giving you the energy and the, the vibes to help you and the strength that you may not have right now to help you through it because it, it's totally possible. It seems hard right now, but it, it's not too far away. Life after pain is possible. <laughs> A whole lovely, lovely, lovely life, right? Uh, awesome. Thank you, Kate. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you.